Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. Layton Green, welcome. What's up? I seen mm-hmm. her perform out at uh, Howard Homecoming, mm-hmm. uh, what, about a week ago? Yeah. Killed it. Killed it, killed it, killed it. Hey, she named her album the right thing, too, Tell Your Story, because mm-hmm. you really told your story. Yeah. First song, Blame On Me, you just put it all out there. Put it all out there. Was that therapeutic for you? No, it was, yeah. Um, I felt like all my life I held all that in, so like it kind of was weighing on me, you know? But as I got to this point, I felt like I went through all that for a purpose, so I could speak for those that don't have no voice, you know. Mm. So, well, let's start from the beginning. You're from St. Louis, East St. Louis, East St. Louis, and, and how did she's you like? Get... Be clear. Why no, you correct like, that? East Tell St. me why Louis. you correct that. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the di- well, East St. Louis is across the water, so it's in Illinois. Okay. And St. Louis is in Missouri, so. Got you. So how did you get your start? How did you find your love for music and, and get started in music and get signed? I've always loved music. Um, it just really was a part of me. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it came from because nobody in my family is like musically talented. Nobody on my mama's side or my daddy's side. My step, uh, my stepdad raised me, but he like loves music, so he was always listening to, you know, real R and B like Mary J. Blige, India Ari, mm-hmm. listening to Prince. Put me on all that, and we didn't have much, so only really had a radio in my room. And I had no TV, we didn't have no cable or nothing like that. So I really just spent a lot of time alone in my room with the radio. Mm -hmm. My dad worked all the time, and my mom, she suffered from bipolar depression because of things she went through in her childhood that kind of just like followed her, Mm -hmm. so. um, When did you realize you could sing? When I was like seven. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, that was when others around me realized I could sing. You know, I'm singing around the house, Mm -hmm. and it was something that I loved doing, but never really knew, I never, you know, knew I could sing. So one day I was playing American Idol with my cousins. Just playing American Idol in, in the living room, huh? <laughs> playing American Idol. How do you play American Idol? You... I was you like, you going to be the judges? Right. I'm going to get on the I'm going to sing. <laughs> they voted you out? They was like, no, they just stopped the whole game. It was like, hold on, you can really sing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was Simon? No, I, nah, then they just took me in the living room. And it was just like, do you know your daughter can sing? My mom was like, I mean, I hear her around the house, but I'm not really just tuned in with her. Mm-hmm. What'd you perform? I sung Love by Kichiko. Okay. Yeah, so That's I, a tough one. That ain't an easy one either. Yeah, I bust out in that. <laughs> and my mama just started crying right off the right off the rip. Wow. And she was just like, dang, I never knew you could sing. How was, old were you then? I was like seven or eight. Wow. And she probably didn't know how to take the steps to get you in the business because you said you don't come from a musical family. Right. She she definitely did it. And we didn't have the funds for it, you know, for that. So like we were just, struggling my whole life honestly so mm-hmm. how do you like you let's that? pull up to a nelly concert or a chingy concert and see if we can meet nah, somebody backstage i met nelly before mm-hmm. in st louis mm-hmm. um, and, how did, and how did you get signed well that's a long story um we got time <laughs> <laughs> well i mean i was living with some family like i said i was raised by my biological i mean my stepdad mm-hmm. i reached out to some biological family when i was 18 years old um, to come to come live with them because my life had really just like fell apart. I didn't graduate high school. Mm-hmm. I was homeless. I didn't have nowhere to go. So I just reached out to them. I said, can I come live with y'all, get my life on track? Because I didn't know where I was headed. And I was, like all my life, I was so set. Like, I'm going to be famous. You know, I'm going to be good. You know what I'm saying? It's how I used to think. And then when I got there, I got to, I got content. I was just like, man, maybe I'm just going to be regular. I was working at Walmart. I was working on getting my GED. Mm-hmm. And... I just posted a video. It was a Rolling Peace cover that I did. I posted I it on Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it went crazy. Is that when um, your producer reached out to you? I had already met G Styles when I was 16. Okay. So I met him. I was working at Wingstop. He just walked in. You had all types of jobs. Wingstop, mm-hmm. Walmart. Wingstop, yeah. <laughs> I, I was actually a manager at Wingstop. I worked at Wingstop for a long time. What's your favorite um, flavor? Lemon pepper. Okay. Yeah. I'm with that. Lemon pepper. <laughs> um... So I had already met him. So after I had went viral, I reached back out to him mm-hmm. because I moved away living with the biological family. Reached back out to him because I didn't know what steps to take. Because everybody was like, we need a full version, need a full version. I didn't have no studio or anything like that. So I reached out to him. And I was just like, I need help. And he was like, you come live with me and we can figure it out. And I moved in with him and we cut that. And That was in Atlanta or that was still in St. Louis? That, I, I was living in Murfreesboro and I moved back to Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. So he's from Knoxville. And 
Um, we cut that record, put it on SoundCloud, and it did numbers. Right. It hit Billboard and everything. It went viral. Right. right. And I just, I just capitalized on it. Started doing more covers. I was like, okay, people like this, mm-hmm. and I gained a huge platform from it. Did Kodak ever say anything about it? Nah, nah, uh, not for real. Mm-hmm. But um, I posted. I I uh, released a an original mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't want people to think that that's all I was. was well, you could cover do was just covers. Artists, right. Man, so, we got to talk about myself. Because yeah. what had you gone through when you wrote that song that you felt like that? Well, well, myself came from when I was homeless and I ran away with a man. Mm-hmm. And I put him before everybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't love myself. I didn't love... I, I just like... Me, my mom, and my brother, we were living in a motel at the time. And I just like left them. Mm-hmm. I was actually like... 17 two weeks before my 18th 18th birthday and I just abandoned them and I don't know that relationship was, just wasn't worth it you know what I'm saying and it was an older man it was an older man yeah I know, I know you say you put him before yourself but I mean clearly you was this was a survival for you at the time though right it was but <laughs> he wasn't reciprocating that right right and he didn't really know what I was going through like I didn't I couldn't even tell him that what I was really going through. I had I lied about my whole life to him. Mm-hmm. But it was just more so like when I first got there, he already had a child and he told me he had another one on the way wow. after I did all this. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, dang, I got to deal with this. And I dealt with it and I tried to stick it out with him and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't work. work out. What was the final straw? He broke up with me, actually. Oh, he did? Yeah, I tried to hold it down. And when the baby came? Or? Yeah, when the baby came, he, he wanted to get back with his baby mama. So. That's respectable. That's respectable? For him, or at least for him and his baby mom. <laughs> I mean, it hurts for you. That's but. what I'm saying. You should. It, he wanted me to stay so bad when he told me about the child, so I wanted to be there for him. Mm-hmm. So You thought about staying? No, I definitely wanted she, to she stay. Stayed. She tried. Yeah. I stayed. He broke up with her. And, and I, I put... I, I dropped get my GED. He yeah. said that I had to bring in half of the bills. Like we had to have everything. So that's why I became manager at Wingstop. I picked up a second job at a country club and I was waitressing. So I felt like I was putting him before me. Like I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm living the life you want to live. Right. And I'm not even working on getting my future together. I'm not even working on getting my high school diploma. Like, mm-hmm. And he wasn't so, support. Oh, but he, did he know that you still hadn't gotten your high Yeah, he knew oh, all he knew. that. Because I know you said you lied about a lot of oh, things. Oh, I lied about me being, you know what I'm saying? He didn't know I was homeless and, mm-hmm. and the life that I was living. I just made up a whole Did he life. know you wanted to be a singer at that point? He did know I wanted to be a singer. He actually took me to um, go try out for The Voice in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. So when he broke up with you, what did you do next after that? Oh, when he broke up with you, what did he say to you? He was like, yo, you know, you deserve better. Well, it was like certain signs, honestly. Like, a me- he, we were sleeping in the same bed. He wouldn't even touch me. He, you know what I'm saying? It was just completely different. Mm-hmm. And... He wouldn't talk to me for real. And it one I remember one time he we got the iPhones. He bought me a phone when I moved in with him. And his whole thing was let's have the locations on. Oh, he turned his off. He was, yeah, by the end of the relationship, he was like, I think we should turn the locations off because that's the only <laughs> that's, that's the only that's the only uh source of trust you can have, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so he was like, we're just going to cut it off. Oh, boy. I was just like, okay, it's a, uh, this is a sign. Hello, right? <laughs> it was your idea to cut them on, and now you want to cut them off. I didn't know that was a thing. What you mean? The location on, you've, off you've, mar- you've been married 25 years, bro. That, that's not a thing for me. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't know it was a thing either until that relationship. <laughs> so so after after he left, what did you do next? Because he was paying half the bills and all that. Well, I, he was like, when he broke up with me, he was like, I'll give you a month to get out. Damn. I was like, no, I'll get out today. Like, I don't need a month to get out. My daddy, well, I ran away from, ran away to St. Louis. So East St. Louis, that's right across the water. So my daddy still lived in East St. Louis. I called my daddy up. I'm like, you know, I told him what it was. And my daddy came, you know, he came and got me. And I lived with my daddy for a while, but he lives in the house with his girlfriend and five kids. And it was just like too much for me. <laughs> so I ain't had no, my own space. So mm-hmm. I was, I tried to live in my granny house too much going on. I started sleeping in my uh, car. I started sleeping in my car outside my granny house. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, and I did that for like two months. Then that's when I reached back out to my biological family because I didn't have nowhere to go. Your grandma ain't never said, girl, if you don't come in this house, why are you in that car again? It was a situation where I couldn't just sleep in there. It wasn't comfortable. I wasn't comfortable. What was it? 
You don't mind talking about it? Or do you mind talking about it? Put my granny business out there. Well, it, it, she had bad bugs like it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was gonna be saying it was bad. Okay. Granny gonna call you today. That's what I'm saying. My granny gonna, gonna tell me out. You just gonna tell me why I got bad bugs. <laughs> so you got Look, bit by bad bugs. But bad meanwhile, bad. I'm like, but it was a bad, was. y'all. Like it was so bad. Like you <laughs> couldn't even sit on the couch. <laughs> you got bit by bad bugs. Nah, you made it bad. Bad, like <laughs> so bad. Did you get grandma's house uh, exterminated <laughs> after you got some bread? <laughs> it's a, the problem is fixed. Problem fixed. All right, just you gotta get rid of the furniture when you have bed bugs. You can't even like get. No, yeah, and it was so everything. bad. They was like literally climbing up the walls, the, oh the floors. God. Like they weren't even bed bugs no more. Granny gonna call. No, the way, the way you set like it up, that. I thought it was a family member in the house that was messing I was with you. Like, I thought it was some guy in I was the house trying. He was trying to avoid some bed bugs. Bed bugs. Thank you, Jesus. Granny gonna be messy, boy. All right, so now all that. I wasn't trying to get ate up. How did you get to QC? Well, um, after I did the myself, mm -hmm. that's when like the labels started calling, mm -hmm. and I I sat down with a lot of labels. Mm -hmm. um, QC Coach K actually just reached out to me through a DM. Mm -hmm. It was like we should set up a meeting, and, and you I knew was who he was. When yeah, he was I already okay. knew. I already know the whole movement, of course, mm -hmm. but I didn't think that they would ever, you know, reach out to me because mm -hmm. being that they only had rappers, rappers on their roster, so I was. Oh, snap. They want to meet with me. We made it happen. I was already living in Atlanta at the time. So that meeting, the first meeting, I walked out of there. I was like, I know I want to sign with them. How'd just you know? because, Just because they were so genuine, you know what I'm saying? He sat me down. He wanted to know my whole story, my background, where I come from. And he loved me for me, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like they was trying to change me in any, any sort of way. And that's what I was scared of, signing with a label and them changing me and making mm -hmm. me sell something I didn't want to sell. Cause mm -hmm. I'm not really, you know, out there like that. You you didn't have no reservations because they're such a hip hop driven label. You um, what you say? You didn't have no reservations about signing to them because they're such a rap label. No, I didn't. Or, you no. probably thought, well, since I'm the only R and B that has me in my own lane. Yeah, I was like, okay, this I can make history with this. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I just thought it all made sense, and I felt like they understood who I was as a person and as an art artist. Now, I saw oh. you tweeted out the other day something about how you don't know how you could ever trust somebody enough to be in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you laugh like that? Because <laughs> I just be tweeting, retweeting stuff. Uh -huh. So you still, like, now you really have these trust issues. Because I feel like after what you went through and then now achieving uh, some success mm -hmm. and knowing that you're on your way to stardom, does that make it even harder? Like, who loves me for me? Who really wants to be with me? Oh, who yeah, can I definitely. Trust? Definitely, but you know, not really focused on that right now. Mm -hmm. Focus on my career. <laughs> you said I yeah. vent all the time on Twitter. Yeah, I do vent all the time on Twitter just because I feel like that's the, I don't know. I'm open with my fans too, mm -hmm. and they feel like they feel comfortable enough to where they, you know, I, t I have conversations with them all the time. Yeah, like I feel like a therapist, honestly. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like they they just feel comfortable enough to open up to me, so. How Congratulations you to the number one. She had a number one R&B album. Yeah. Congratulations, Congratulations Thank for that. You. That's huge. Thank you. That's a new artist, too. That's amazing. How yeah. did you vent before music? Like, what did you do? You kept I the journal vent. or anything? No, yeah, I didn't vent. That was the thing. Like, I mean, I just kept it all in. Yeah. I try to be strong, especially just seeing how my mom was. You know, I wanted to just be strong for her, and I didn't want to come bring more problems, you know what I'm saying? So everything that, I, that was bothering me, I just tried to keep it. To myself. It seems like uh, an, an album and being biracial. It seems like you felt like you never fit in. Yeah, um, in East St. Louis, I was like the whitest thing in school. So I mean, I had friends just because I I grew up in that area, but I still got picked on. You know what I'm saying? They called me the white girl, mm -hmm. pulled my hair. Um, and then when I moved to Tennessee, when my mom and my dad broke up, uh, I moved in with. My mom's white, so, you know, mm -hmm. um, her she kept us kind of away from her family just because they kind of just disown her mm -hmm. just because of her dating guy. outside of her yeah. race mm -hmm. and having kids <laughs> outside of her race. So, like, um, we just stayed away from that side, but we didn't have no other choice, so we moved in with her mom. And she was living in Merville, Tennessee, which is, like, literally nothing but whites. Mm -hmm. And moving from East St. Louis and going to... There, that was like a huge culture shock. And I'm and this little ghetto girl coming. <laughs> they just was like, who is this? You went from being the whitest girl to being the blackest girl. The blackest girl. girl. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, dang, I can't 
I can't fit in. You know what I'm saying? And when I went to when I went to that school, that was the worst. That was the worst. Like, like what kind of things were happening? They used to call me on my name, call me the N word. Mm -hmm. They used to push me down. Literally, this was. You got into a lot of fights. Mm, I didn't fight. My brother, he did. He didn't even graduate high school because of that. You beating them white boys up every time he you was try. He was beating them white boys up. Yeah. <laughs> he was coming home like yelling at my mom like I'm not going back to that school. Like it was that bad. Did she understand how bad it was when y'all was trying to explain it to her? My mama was just like, I need y'all to get y'all education, but she moved us to a um a diverse city that was Knoxville. So she heard about it and that was like thirty minutes away. So she tried to put us in a more diverse school. Have your family members reached out to you since like you know, all these family members that even on your mom's side that Hell didn't mess with yeah. you, that disowned you rich her. now, now so I know Nah, I'm going to be honest. I mean, Why do you think she rich? I'm just going to say that's what they think. Oh. That's rich now. You got a number one yeah, album. They think, think that you rich now. Automatically, once they see you doing interviews, doing Absolutely. music videos, you signed a deal, people like, she got money now. She got money now. Uh -huh. I just saw her pick a quarter up outside. <laughs> <laughs> Not just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Now you stay rich. Yeah. <laughs> um not really, which is crazy. Um on my daddy's side, yeah. My mm. my stepdad's side, that's like the closest family to me. But on my biological side, no. On my mama's side, no, nah, not really. Does that upset you? Or you like, does that upset you or you don't care? They've never really been in tune with my life. So. so they don't know that you sign. They don't know what's going on with you. I don't know if they know. I mean, I don't even know if they listen to the type of music I make. Right. Mm -hmm. so. But I feel like family talks, too. They'll be like, you know. No, yeah, for sure. I'm sure. But they they haven't reached out to me mm -hmm. or congratulated me or anything like that. Is that something you're open to? Like, can you, do you feel like you can forgive that? And yeah, it's my family. Okay. Yeah, all day. I mean, I want to be close with all my families, but. I don't know, but that's just on there. It's hard. It is hard. No, I get it because I'm half Chinese and half black, and the Chinese side of my family definitely had issues with my yeah. mom. Well, with my dad being with my ma my mom because mm -hmm. my dad's Chinese. It's just I hate that. Mm -hmm. I hate that. When did you become comfortable with like being biracial? When did you finally embrace it all? <laughs> you still haven't. Oh, uh, recently, honestly, I mean, I, I got the best of both worlds. I feel like mm -hmm. like. And I mean, we all come in different shapes and sizes and different ethnics. Like that's it's just what we are. We human. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm any different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's not like you actually can get white privilege because you don't. Pre to me, you don't present as a white woman. No, yeah, people don't even think I'm white. They just automatically say I'm black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you probably say I'm black. I mean, I I I say I'm biracial just because if I'm going. Acknowledge one, I should acknowledge both. You the know truth, what I'm saying? Yeah. And my mama, she sometimes, you know, my mama be feeling like I, I don't. <laughs> just on her. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? She, then, <laughs> and I can't do that to her, you feel me? So so how many people have been sliding in your DMs now? <laughs> <laughs> A lot. It's A crazy? Lot. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I'm just, I be trying to ignore it. I mean, I do ignore it. Mm -hmm. I do ignore it. What if it's like another artist who you would want to work with? I will work How'd... with as far as if it's business. Then... But what if somebody tries to holler at you, but you would like to do a song with them? How do you change that around? See, I don't know. Better you gotta the tell them. You gotta be the real. I do tell them. I do yeah. tell them, but then they don't want to do a song with me. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, so they didn't cut it. Like they'll cut it completely Just have off. Just P answer. That's all. Oh, you could answer as them. <laughs> you could be like, hey, yeah, this. There you go. <laughs> You right, but <laughs> hey, this Coach K. Um, thanks for hitting up Layton. We would love for you to do a song. Where you at? Pull up. <laughs> or or we'll, I'll set up and we'll do the song and we'll get in the studio and all they own is they trying to get close. You gotta tell them. Like, I ain't trying to fuck them. No, yeah, to yeah, yeah, for sure. Money, I nigga. can tell them that, and the they only always hit out one is on the radio. Yeah, okay. yeah, they always they always get upset. How's the work? Bro? So that's happened before to you? No, yeah. Damn. Yes. So now I don't say no that names. Lose, that make you lose respect for the artist. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for how sure. do you handle that? Because people always ask that as women in this business. Like, how do you handle it when you want to do business, but then guys are trying to holler at you and not taking it as seriously as they should? <laughs> I don't want to say no bad advice, but I mean, in the past, well, for yourself, how do you handle it? Right. In the past, I've like played the game. You know what I'm saying? Like. Made it seem like it act was nice. Going. It can right, act nice. Get the song, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the song and After then I get the song. <laughs> it's a will go out. <laughs> but I, 
<laughs> I can't do that no more. I can't do that no more. You know, mm-hmm. and be like, "That's good for you. That's what you thought you was gonna get. Thanks for the song." Now, yeah, I just let them know. I mean, it ain't that. And if that's what you're looking for, then we can't do business. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when do you let them know that after they finally clear it? Cause they gotta clear it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you lead them all. They still ain't gotta so clear it. it. <laughs> they still gotta go back for the clearance. <laughs> I mean, they will. If, we wouldn't even get as far as cutting a record. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, how were things when you met your other label mates? Oh, like they're super supportive, mm-hmm. super supportive. And I, I mean, it's crazy actually. Just you know, seeing people and you really loving them, and and now you actually on the same team as them, and on they some really songs support. With them. Right, on some songs <laughs> with them, it's just so surreal and. How's the work been? Because I know you've been traveling. You're always doing shows. You're always on the road. You get time for yourself at all? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I find time. Um, it's fun. I, I, I'm it's not embracing yet. everything. You're right, I'm enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? The early mornings, the long nights, I love it all. I know it's going to be worth it. Did your ex reach out to you after myself and say, I know that song's about me? He actually reached out to me, and he was just like, you know, congratulations on everything. Mm-hmm. And Taking he didn't back. know that song was about him. I told him it was about him. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, sorry I made you go through all that or made you feel like that. Was he like, but me and her not together no more, so. I need that he iPhone money back. I need that iPhone money back. I need that iPhone. Tried I know to, all the game. He has tried to, you know, work his way back in, but that ain't happening <laughs> at good. all. Go oh, take care not... of your two kids. Damn. <laughs> good. That's not happening. You turned 21 in December, right? I do. Damn, what you gonna do for your 24th birthday? That's a big one. 21 is a, is a milestone. I don't know. Everybody telling me to go to Vegas, but I don't drink. So. Vegas? Vegas, that's it. That. A little bit more money now. You can do a little better than Vegas. Why, why you, th- you, 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 you kind of a little life. bit more money. I ain't saying right. you rich. A little bit more money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to Dubai, but I don't know how, yeah. re- I don't know if I'm at money. You know what I'm saying? Now nah, look, you got two oh, big, you you big, uh, big brothers. Coach uh, K, Coach K and P. They gonna set something up. Don't even worry about it. You see some of the yeah. gifts they gave the other <laughs> Come on. Yeah. That's 21. 21 is a big one. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do it big. I'm sure. You got to do Dubai. It's Dubai. Dubai, Dubai. Not just don't do Dubai for a week. You got to do Dubai for a couple weeks. You know? <laughs> for a couple weeks. Why not? We got work to do. But yeah, oh. she's also working right now. So. She's going out there. She can work out there. I'm sure Coach has set it up so she works oh, out there dang. too. Get a check out there too. There's nothing better than when you have those work things that you could turn into a vacation at there the same go. time. Yeah. Like, I got to work here, but I'm going to stay an extra three or four days and just chill. I haven't been able to do that yet. So. <laughs> right. Haven't been. Well, hopefully for your birthday, you'll have yeah. a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. But I get it. You got to work because you don't yeah. want to take too much time off right now. For sure. Well, is, your, is, your life, is your life what you thought it was going to be at 21? No. Really? To be honest. No. What you I thought you would be? It. What you thought you'd be doing? thought I would still be, you know, living with my biological family, still trying to figure life out. Um, I just didn't see all this happening right now. Really? Yeah. Even when you started singing in the living room and people said you could sing, I just like, like I said, I, all my life I just n- knew that this was my purpose, but I didn't know when it was gonna happen. This you, fast, you didn't saying? think it would happen this fast? Basically. I didn't know. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? And when I hit 18, I'm like, okay, if it ain't happen by now, it ain't gonna, mm-hmm. it ain't gonna happen. But now, look now at we God. here. I know. <laughs> look at God. Well, let's gotta, get into your joint. Let's get into a single right now. Let's introduce your record. Leave me alone. That's what you want to hear. Okay, leave him alone. Yeah, one? yeah, yeah. Right, leave so him alone. It. It's going crazy. It just hit a hundred million streams. Congratulations! Yeah. That's dope. Thank it goes you. Is leave him alone. Leighton Green. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> 